Okay, so this is our in-progress outdoor basketball court. It's 20 feet by 24 feet, which I chose because I found a kit of uh, court tiles, outdoor court tiles from Rubber Flooring Inc. Uh, it costs about $1,500 for the kit, and those dimensions, it has a key and a three-point line painted on it already. So these wood boards here, these are four by fours, and um, I got 12 footers, so that was pretty easy. It's two 12 footers in a row, give you the 24 feet you need. Uh, so you don't have to cut that side and the one side you gotta cut. So some of the details to make it. So here you've got, uh, this is basically the corner we started in because we wanted, we weren't gonna compromise on the distance from this, the top of this um, wood to the step. Uh, we wanted that to be the same distance as the other steps so you wouldn't have a difference in the step down. So to attach these two corner pieces, basically there's about a two foot four by four underneath here. And you can see the nail hole here. That's a eight inch uh, galvanized steel spike. And uh, drilled a little pilot hole first and hammered those in pretty easily. And so there's another steel spike there. So they're both going in the four by four that's underneath both of these. And that's tying it together. And here you can see the house. So the next thing, design detail is the distance from the house is 46 inches. So that gives us exactly where this first uh, four by four was laid out. And then we have a right angle here. And to do a right angle, uh, you could actually use Pythagorean's theorem. So, you know, you remember X squared plus Y squared equals C squared. And there's all these uh, details online where there's basically whole number um, right Pythagorean triangles. So basically, if one side is three feet, and one side is four feet, then the diagonal will be five feet. So basically I measured from this end to here, three feet, mark the line, and then this end to here, measure four feet and mark the line, and then um, move this board until the diagonal was five feet. And so that will give you a, a right triangle right there in that corner. Um, and then just try to make everything level from here. So level this one out and level that one out. And then here, where these two boards join, again, we've got a piece of four by four underneath them. This is a, I use a four foot piece, but it's probably use less. I don't know, four foot gives you like a nice solid footer. Use the galvanized steel spice to nail into underneath here. And basically just went around the whole thing like that. Um, we dug out quite a bit, as you can see here, to, to get the level lines. Some areas we dug out, some areas we had to stack a bunch of boards. But the point is, these are um, four by fours. Their actual depth is three and a half inches. So um, we're gonna use two and a half inches of gravel and then another inch of stone dust to level up to the top of the wood here. And we think, I think that'll give me a pretty good base. Um, I've heard other recommendations that you want maybe three to four inches of gravel and one to two inches of stone dust and then the tiles go on top of all that, but um, I don't feel like digging that much, so I'm just gonna go with two and a half inches gravel, one inch stone dust. Um, so then just going around the edge of the court, you know, basically leveled out all the, the dirt over here um, and, and leveling the boards. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this corner is kind of interesting because it's the, the yard kind of slopes down quite a bit, so we had to build up a couple of uh, four by fours um, to make a wall. There's actually three of these under here, and it's filled with gravel at this point. So, um, but that's very standard, and basically the design rules just didn't want to have um, two four by fours end at the same point, so I used like this shorter piece of four by four, so then you have a this other midpoint is in the midpoint of this upper um, four by four. 
you know, just kind of staggering them to give some strength to the wall. Didn't use dead men or anything like that. It's a pretty short wall. Not a ton of pressure is gonna be on it. And the other thing we did for our house is um, took the opportunity to like, grade this a little better. So, um, like I said, it's 46 inches from the wall to this first four by four. So um, I'm using a rule that I wanna drop six inches in 12 feet. So um, basically, you know, just stuck a level onto here, going across, marked off where, you know, the level point of this top piece of wood is on the wall, two inches up. And that's where I started my dirt and just brought it down on an angle there. So this is 46 inches, about four feet and it's, it's going two inches there. And then in the box itself, the dirt, I measured out another eight feet and that drops another four inches. Uh, so then across the 12 feet here, I've got a total of six inches, probably a lot more actually, because there's a huge step here. So nice drainage away from the house. Got some puddling here, which I might make a little bit of a swale to drain it out to the, uh, uh, rest of the slope part of the, the yard. And then we're going to continue this and fill it up with gravel and the stone dust, add the hoop, and um, there you go. Pretty simple. A lot of labor, a lot of digging, and a lot of gravel to haul. So we have a thing here in Maryland, Casa de Maryland, that lets you um, hire labor for, you know, minimum wage or, or a little more if, if you can afford it. Um, and that helped a lot to get everything done. Now we've got the gravel installed. This is a total of five scoops. And again, it's a 20 by 24 uh, dimension court. So that's a total of 480 square feet. And there's different gravel calculators you could get online. But the tricky part is, you know, your ground is gonna be uneven, so it's hard to do the math. So what I'd recommend is ordering a couple scoops just to get a base a level base and then measuring the height of the gravel you need from that level base um, which i didn't do because as you can see we've got a little bit under ordering there but that's okay we'll just order a little extra stone dust and build that up that way um, but generally what i was told is that uh one scoop of gravel, which is a cubic yard, gives you 300 square feet of coverage up to one inch. So we had about three and a half inches total from the, the ground, what we're going for from the ground to the top of the wood. And we wanted two and a half inches of that gravel so you could do the math. And we were pretty close with the five scoops. We did use some of the gravel to do leveling under some of the um, wood boards and different drainage. So what we did is in this far corner, and you can see over there, we put more gravel on both sides of the wood, actually, then put landscaping fabric on the outside and dirt on top of that so that if any water goes under the wood, it'll go through the gravel and down the slope of the yard away from our house. While on these sides, we didn't really care about drainage, so we just built the outside up with dirt. So you can use dirt and gravel in different places depending on how you want to direct the water flow. Um, so again, we've heard, you know, I read about people telling you to use a rolling um, compactor or a ride-on compactor, um, maybe a jumping jack, something like that, but we just use this hand tamper and as you can see, it's pretty solid. I think that's gonna be fine to put stone dust on top of. Um, we leveled it <clears throat> just using this two by four with a level on top just to get an idea that our goal was to be one inch, which we marked there. So we're pretty close to our inch. Uh, so we, we marked one inch in different spots all around and tried to get that point so then we know that for the stone dust, we need one inch times 480 square feet. Uh, same math for the stone dust. It's one scoop 
one cubic yard is 300 square feet so we need about a scoop and a half but we've got this extra little gaps here it's kind of this part is not exactly an inch it's a little we need a little more so i ended up ordering two and a half um and you know part of the calculus behind that is that if we order more than 100 bucks we get we don't have to pay the 30 dollar delivery charge so i said what the heck let's get two and a half um and that's pretty much much it we're in good shape ready for the stone dust we'll um hand tamp the stone dust when we get it level it out even with the top of the wood and then our tiles are going to go on top of that so getting close okay today we're working with the stone dust and you see we have the screed rails installed um, set level you might have to dig out the gravel or set a little higher with stone dust underneath to get it exactly flush with the top of the wood boards but basically the procedure is put the stone dust between the rails wet it tamp it down we use a hand tamper right here and then of course it'll be a little lower than the wood boards then we're adding a little more stone dust and then running the this two by four which we're using as a screed rail across and and getting it level and that's the procedure so we're getting close here everything's looking pretty level uh definitely difficult to get it 100 percent level across the whole surface so we're focusing on getting the middle parts the most level and leveling it to the that far um piece of wood uh, because that's where the hoop will be so starting from there and going out from the center it's going to be most level but as you taper off towards the edges there's a little bit of a decline or incline just because the nature of leveling the wood box itself that was 100 percent perfect um the one thing i'll say is um when you what our process is we level up the screed bars the metal bars there tamp it down and to, and then basically get it tamped down as it is uh in this the part between the bars right now it's basically a couple of sheets of paper away from being level with the bars then we put another dusting of stone dust uh higher than the bars and use the wood board there or get the screed board even better it'd be more level and we pull it across the screed bars to get it level um, and that's our process recommend leaving the grooves for the screed bars so we can go back and re-level anything that ends up being a little bit off at the end just as a final check uh, and then the tiles go down the other point i'll make is that um, when you're tamping the stone dust you'll need at least twice as much as the calculators online say they will so i think i originally said that it was um, um a scoop of stone dust one cubic yard is 300 square feet covering one inch but it's after you tamp it it's probably half that so we ended up not ordering enough originally okay so now we're installing the tiles um just a little trick if you put a piece of plywood down uh, under the joint, it's a lot easier to click these tiles together. These are the rubber pouring ink tiles that have little loops on one side and little tabs on the other. They go together. And if you have something a little tougher underneath, when you step on it, it'll just click together. Otherwise, you can't really step on it when it's under the when the gravel's underneath. Um, so that's that's helping things move along a lot quicker. Here's a little demo of putting these tiles in. The uh, trickiest ones are when you're in a corner like this. It's definitely doable. And when you have the plywood under. Pretty reasonable. Put that one 
end up with. Let's get a stomp.